a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. In this time of extreme market volatility, our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, thought it would be good to talk about low volatility ETFs. She joins me now to do just that. Um, appropriate, that's for sure. Yes, so market volatility has been so high over the past two, three weeks, and it is expected to remain at an elevated level because uh, of this coronavirus-related uncertainty. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not know whether the global economy or even the U.S. Eco economy is heading into a recession because yep. of the virus-related uh, um, slowdown or uh, whether this the impact on the global economy and the U.S. economy, whether that would be short term for one quarter or two quarter, or it is going to be a deeper downturn for the global economy because the, the, the way things are changing, they are evolving every day, every hour. Yes. Uh, it is very difficult to predict anything. Uh, so during these times of heightened um, volatility and uncertainty, lower volatility stocks typically do well. Mm. And in fact, uh, it was uh, seen in almost all markets studied that lower volatility stocks have performed well over the longer term mm. as well. And that slightly is uh, contradictory to the traditional finance theory because according to traditional finance theory, uh, if you have a riskier asset uh, that demands, uh, you know, higher, higher rate. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but investors, it seems, they chase riskier, hot, riskier stocks, and they leave behind, they ignore, you know, those boring, not so fast moving stocks. Sure. Uh, so that is why that is called the low volatility anomaly, that low volatility stocks have outperformed uh, the riskier stocks because investors misprice risk. That is not to say that this, make, this is going to continue going forward too, mm -hmm. because if too many investors chase low risk stocks, they may become expensive. Mm. Uh, but it seems that in the shorter term, like coming weeks, coming months, when the volatility may remain elevated, these ETFs are worth a look. Well, at the very least, uh, unless I'm missing something, there certainly doesn't seem to be any fundamentals underpinning the stock market. Yes, that's, that's correct. And, and so that makes it even more difficult yes, to, to, predict to gauge responses on the part of the investor. Yes, exactly. It's very difficult. All right, let's take a look at some of these. You have three examples that you I brought have with you. two. You have two. Oh, so yeah. That's right. There's a couple of comparative charts I in the to, mix. Yeah, these are the two most popular low volatility uh, ETFs, and they follow slightly different methodology. Now, this... Uh, ETF by iShares, and iShares has a suite of low volatility ETFs for the U.S. market, then for the global market, emerging markets, so investors can take a look at the suite. Uh, so that the methodology they follow is that they do not, um, not only they look at the uh, volatility of individual stocks, but they also look at the correlations between stocks, how stocks move with respect to one another, and then they try to arrive at a portfolio uh, which has lower volatility compared to the broader market. Okay. Uh, this was one of the most popular ETFs last year. It gained a lot of assets and has over 35 billion in assets now. Uh, pretty reasonably priced at 15 basis points. Now, if you want to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the quote page on zax.com and uh, has a nice dividend yield to 2.14% uh, from there you can go to the external home page look at the portfolio and other details for this ETF uh, now you will see that information technology is the biggest holding that may appear you know a bit surprising to some people that uh, technology stocks are usually uh, more volatile, whereas utilities and consumer staples are 
have low volatility. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I mentioned, because it looks as the, portfo uh, the portfolio as a whole, um, so maybe I, those IT stocks have low correlations with other sectors. That is why you see a big exposure to IT, then financials, consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities. If you look at the top holdings, Newmont, Visa, PepsiCo, Republic Services, and Coca-Cola. Okay, and then Invesco has the uh, Invesco S&P 500 low volatility ETF. The ticker symbol is SPLV. Now, Invesco also has a suite of low volatility ETFs. They follow a slightly different methodology. They look at the S&P 500 uh, index and just select the 100 least volatile stocks over the past uh, 12 months. Slightly more expensive than the other one, 25 basis points, and a little bit less popular too with 11 billion in assets under management. Now again, to look, take a look at the CTF, you can go to the quote page. Nice dividend yield of up almost 2.5%. Uh, you can read our articles, then go to the external home page uh, to look at the portfolio and other details. And because it looks at the 100 least volatile stocks, so that is why, as expected, defensive low volatility sector uh, like utility, utilities, real estate, financials, and consumer staples. These are the top sectors in the ETF. And looking at the holdings, Eversource, Consolidated Edison, WEC Energy, Duke Energy, and Excel Energy, Walmart. These are the top holdings in the ETF. All right, what are we comparing here in this first comparison chart? So on this slide, uh, I have the performance since 20th February. So the market touched all the major indexes, they touched all time highs on the 19th February. Mm -hmm. And after that, it has been, the markets have been, you know, and going down and there are days when they have gone up a lot, so a lot of roller coaster ride mm -hmm. since then. So you will see that both these ETFs have done pretty well compared to the S&P 500 uh, ETF uh, over the past two, three weeks. Uh, they have lost between 17 and 17.5%, uh, whereas uh, the S&P has lost about 25 20.5 percent over this period. Interesting. What about the second chart? So here I have the longer term chart uh, uh, since uh, SPLV's inception. So uh, since inception, uh, I wanted to look at their performance. Uh, now these uh, ETFs, the low volatility ETFs, they typically lag the broader market when there are the it's, uh, the market is very bullish, uh, but they out hold up relatively well when the market is very volatile. But if you look at the longer term, uh, you see that both, the, both of them have actually done pretty well. Uh, USMV has actually outperformed the S&P 500 index, whereas the other one has done uh, delivered similar performance. And do you own either one? I own the iShares product, USMV, in the ETF investor portfolio. All right. Well, it's going to be interesting to see where this all goes here as we move forward. Thank you for the information. Don't forget, there's always more ETF information in that section of Zax.com. Use the Funds tab in the top toolbar to access that information. And, and don't forget also that uh, every week, uh, Nina hosts and produces an ETF Spotlight podcast. And to check out those, all you need to do is stay on the home page, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on the word podcast. It'll take you to that. Also, don't forget, in case you don't know or you need to remember, you can get advance notice of uh, positive earnings surprises because Zach's research is predicting with about 80% accuracy which stocks are going to be beating earnings expectations even before the earnings reports are released. To access that information, go to zax.com slash promo, where you can get all the details. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.